हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस चैप्टर नंबर सेवन फ्रॉम आर हिस्ट्री टेक्स्ट बुक द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ द स्वराज इन आर प्रीवियस चैप्टर्स वी हैव लर्न दैट शिवाजी महाराज एस्टैब्लिश्ड स्वराज ही हैड हिमसेल्फ क्राउंड एंड आफ्टर हिज कोरोनेशन शिवाजी महाराज एकम्पलिश्ड दक्षिण दिग्विजय दैट इज द कॉन्क्वेस्ट ऑफ द साउथ Dear students the swaraj expanded comprising large areas of nashik pune satara sangli kolhapur sindhudurg ratnagiri raigad and thane districts of maharashtra and it also included some parts of the states of andhra pradesh and tamil nadu as well therefore it was very much essential for shivaji maharaj to see to it that such a large territory should be administered very smoothly he also had the large aim to ensure the welfare of his people therefore shivaji maharaj set up very efficient administration and in this chapter we are going to get some information about the administration of swaraj dear students we are going to discuss or study the administration of shivaji maharaj at two levels for any administrator or for any government there are two layers of management to look into the first is the law and order which is to be maintained within the territory and the second layer is the border protection of the borders in the same manner in this chapter we are going to see two levels of the administration of swaraj the first will be of the law and order let us begin with that the first important feature of shivaji maharaj administration was his council of eight ministers it is known as asht pradhan mandal asht means eight pradhan it means ministers and mandal means council in this way shivaji maharaj had asht pradhan mandal that is council of eight ministers this administration was divided into eight departments and the head was appointed for each of the department in this way he had eight ministers and the council together was known as ashta pradhan mandal Shivaji Maharaj alone had the power to appoint a minister and even to remove him from his position the ministers were answerable to Shivaji Maharaj for the administration of their respective departments Shivaji Maharaj selected the council on the basis of their merit and achievements and instead of granting them jagirs watans or gifts or fields he paid them handsome salaries in your textbook on page number 29 you can see a chart showing the names of the ministers their designation and the work that they do let us have a glance at this chart the first position was of pradhan he was responsible for running the administration and making arrangements for the conquered territories and moro trimbak pingle was the pradhan of shivaji maharaj ashta pradhan mandal the second minister was known as amatya Amatya was responsible for keeping the accounts of the state and he was Ramchandra Nilkanth Muzumdar 
the third minister in the council was known as sachiv his function was to prepare royal edicts anna ji datto was sachiv in the council next minister was known as mantri his work was related to correspondence and datta ji trimbak waknes was mantri in the ashtapradhan mandal senapati was responsible for organization of the army and protection of the kingdom and hambir rao mohite was the senapati of shivaji maharaj sumant was the next minister who dealt with foreign relations ramchandra trambak dabir was the sumant in the council another important minister was nyayadhish as the very name suggests he was responsible for dispensing justice niraji rao ji was nyayadhish of swaraj and the last minister in the council was known as pandit rao his function was to look after religious matters moreshwar pandit rao was the minister in this council in this way shivaji maharaj divided different departments and allotted head for each of the department for smooth administration of swaraj now let us know about the policy regarding agriculture as we all know that india is a land of villages and agriculture was the main occupation in the villages even today india is a land of agriculture shivaji maharaj knew the importance of agriculture therefore he paid very much attention to the welfare of farmers he entrusted the responsibility of organizing the land revenue system to his capable and experienced office bearer anna ji datto hmm? he warned the officers that they should not collect more revenue than the amount that was fixed he encouraged peasants to bring uncultivated land under cultivation and the most important point for all of us to note is if the crop was lost due to excessive rains or due to drought conditions or if an enemy army had devastated the area of the village then remissions were granted in the land revenue and other taxes also shivaji maharaj had instructed his officers to provide peasants with bullocks plows and good seeds for sowing because he knew that if more attention would be paid to agriculture there would be prosperity in the villages as i told you earlier that agriculture was the backbone of the economy of the village because that was the main occupation and there were other supplementary occupations related to agriculture and these supplementary occup occupations helped the villagers to satisfy their necessities within the territory of the village in this way the village in itself was a self sufficient units in the villages many occupations developed to support agriculture artisans in the village they produced goods and fulfilled the needs of the local people farmers gave a definite share from their produce to artisans and this share that the farmers gave 
in the form of crops or grains was known as baluta i hope you are getting it the next feature important feature of good administration of swaraj was the attention that shivaji maharaj paid for the development of trade and business we all know that shivaji maharaj was a visionary person as he knew that agriculture is the backbone of the village economy he also knew that a kingdom does not prosper without an increase in trade he knew that merchants they bring different goods new goods as also certain necessities into a kingdom goods become available in plenty trade prospers adding to wealth the view that shivaji maharaj took of merchants is seen in the adnya patra where merchants are described as merchants are the ornaments of the kingdom and the glory of the king in this way the importance of trade importance of merchants was acknowledged recognized during the times of shivaji maharaj he always had the policy to protect industries a very good example of this is the salt industry he protected the salt industry in the region of konkan dear students at that time traders they imported salt from the portuguese territory and they sold it in the territory of swaraj but when such imported goods or commodities are sold at our native places it actually affects or it actually damages the development of local economy and same thing happened with swaraj also the import of salt from portuguese territory affected the local trade in konkan areas therefore shivaji maharaj implemented a policy of charging heavy duty on the salt that was imported into swaraj from portuguese territory why did he implement such a tax the intention was that the salt that was imported from the portuguese territory would then cost more and as a result its import would decrease and the sale of the local salt that was prepared in konkan would increase in this way shivaji maharaj had a great vision for the development of trade within his territories dear students these days we all are part of globalization we have accepted globalization and now every country is free to purchase and sells and sell the goods services and commodities produced at their countries such commodities can be sold in any of the countries in the world because of this the local people they suffer a lot what happens these days we are talking about not purchasing the goods prepared by the neighboring nations of india because the profit gained by selling such goods and products is shared by the people who produce it the country that produces it and therefore the local industries of india suffer and as we all know that we are talking about being vocal for local unless and until we the native people don't accept what is produced at our local level we 
cannot achieve good economic development for our country so this vision shivaji maharaj already had at his times now which year we are living into we are living in 2021 and shivaji maharaj had this vision long back ago he imposed taxes for the goods which were imported from other countries and he gave boost he promoted he gave importance to the goods produced within the country why to strengthen the economy of our own nation so this is how we can see that shivaji maharaj was a great visionary in this way dear students here uh we tried to discuss the first level of the administration that is law and order within the territory and now we are going to see how shivaji maharaj took care of the administration for the border of his territories now we are going to discuss about the military organization there were two main divisions of the army of shivaji maharaj infantry and cavalry in the infantry there were officers such as havaldar zumbledar etc the chief of the infantry was called sarnobat he was the highest officer in the infantry and the second division was cavalry there were two types of cavalry men namely shiledars and bargirs the shiledar had his own horse and weapons and the bargir was provided with a horse and weapons by the state that is the government of the state in the cavalry bargirs were more in number the ranks of the cavalry officers were similar to those of the infantry officers the highest officer in the cavalry was the sarnobat netoji palkar pratap rao gujar hambir rao mohite these were some of the famous sarnobats of the cavalry when we are talking about protecting borders it was highly essential for shivaji maharaj to have very efficient intelligence department do you know what is the function of intelligence department this department actually surveys confirms and brings various news of different activities or maybe future plans that the enemy is making against swaraj okay so this is what the intelligence department does it brings confirmed um, information regarding the plans and activities of the enemy so shivaji maharaj had very efficient intelligence department it is said that the people who worked in this intelligence department they used to disguise themselves uh, and um, they used to roam from one place to other disguising themselves and try to collect the information from the villagers and the information of the enemies as well regarding their future plans for the attacks or destroying different villages etc it was the job of the intelligence department to obtain information about the movements of the enemies and submit it to maharaj the intelligence service of maharaj was very efficient bahir ji naik was the head of the intelligence department he was extremely skilled in his job he collected accurate and detailed information about surat before shivaji maharaj planned the raid on surat by this point you must have understood that how much important it is 
for the intelligence department to submit the accurate correct and true information on the basis of which shivaji maharaj planned to raid surat hope you are getting it forts they were of great importance in the medieval age possession of a fort made it possible to keep an eye on the surrounding area in case of foreign attack it was possible to protect the people taking shelter in the fort it was possible to stock the fort with food grains war materials ammunition and military garrison the importance of forts in foundation of swaraj is well stated in adnya patra how it is described it is described with the coming words this kingdom was created by the late revered and exalted majesty forts alone the very line suggests the importance the significance of forts in establishment and in administration of swaraj forts were of great importance there were about 300 forts in the swaraj shivaji maharaj spent a considerable amount of money on building and repairs of these forts he built hill forts like pratapgad pavangad and rajgad hill forts these forts were constructed on hills there was a kiledar a subnis and a karkhanis on every fort these were the officials who looked after all the affairs related to the fort karkhanis he looked after the storage of food grains and maintenance of war material on the fort as these land forts hill forts were of great importance shivaji maharaj knew the importance of sea forts also one of the sea forts that he built was sindhudurg at malwan it is an excellent sea fort to give strength to the construction of fort five khandis of lead was poured into its foundation boys and girls here i would like to explain a little about this word khandis these days we weigh uh, the cement or concrete or material of such sort in kilos and quintals so khandi was one such measurement to weigh the metals like lead so five khandis of lead was poured into the foundation a sea fort called padmadurga was built in front of rajapuri the purpose was to counter the siddhi power about this fort maharaj has said in a letter that by constructing padmadurga he had set up another rajapuri to overshadow the rajapuri of the siddhi this is how shivaji maharaj knew that how forts can help him protecting him, his swaraj and he constructed very strong forts now we have discussed about the military organization we discussed about the intelligence department we discussed about the importance of forts in the same manner navy was equally important for protection of the borders of swaraj enemies on the west coast of india the portuguese of goa the siddhi of janjira and the british factors of surat and rajpur they created obstacles in the work of expanding the swaraj and therefore it was necessary to curb their activities to curb the activities it means 
to <coughs> force to stop these enemy activities and to protect the west coast of swaraj and for this purpose shivaji maharaj raised a navy also he realized that the one who has a navy he controls the sea and so again we notice that shivaji maharaj had great foresight he had great vision there were 400 ships of various kinds in his navy they included battleships like gurab galbat and pal there were ships in the creek of kalyan bivandi vijayadurga and malwan mayank bandari and daulat khan were the chief naval commanders dear students in this way we studied the two major levels of administration of swaraj now as a good administrator we are going to see the important characteristic of shivaji maharaj and that is his concern for the welfare of his subjects maharaj did not work only with the limited ambition of conquering enemy territories and establishing dominance like other things his main objective was to make his subjects independent and for this purpose only he established swaraj the word means self rule self administration self government where people will feel free to take part in the political affairs they will feel free to express their griefs their sorrows they will be efficient enough to protect their own territories they should be skillful enough to govern or to administer their territory and therefore shivaji maharaj established swaraj the rule of self here the people were at the center he was aware that if his people were to really get the joy of freedom it was necessary to have a disciplined administration it was necessary to take comprehensive care of people's welfare and protect the conquered territories shivaji maharaj therefore was not just a ruler he was a watchful administrator who cared for his people's welfare this is clearly seen in his administration of the state because he had the policy of the council of ministers who worked for different eight departments covering all the layers of administration it reflects in the agricultural policies that shivaji maharaj had where he never forced the peasants the farmers to pay the revenue in the conditions of droughts or famines we come to know about his concern for the welfare of his people when he boosts the trades we come to know that shivaji maharaj was a visionary person when he established navy to protect his west coast we come to know that shivaji maharaj was a visionary when he had an efficient military organization shivaji maharaj constructed forts and paid great importance to construct strong forts to protect his people during uh the situations like enemy attacks in this way we tried to cover different aspects of the administration of swaraj in this chapter i hope you understood the lesson thank you